And welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Movies We Can Learn From. And today we're going to review A Triangle of Sadness, which is a dark satire about wealth and capitalism and communism and the disparity. Okay? And our guest today is uh, George Kaysen, my co-host. And uh, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And, and here's George Kaysen, movie reviewer par excellence, who actually likes this movie. It's hard to like this movie. This is a dark satire movie that tends to upend things. So, George, you know, why don't you tell, it's hard to do this, but tell the story of this movie. I know it's hard. Very, very interesting. It, it ends very profoundly, and I know, Jay, you like that, when you, it, they, they rope you in and then you don't know until the end. But it's in three parts. And the first part is they, it opens with this silly scene with all these young guys, uh, male models, and they're trying to filter through them for, for, I think, for this movie, but they're not telling you that. It's sort of like for ads and stuff like that. And it gets into a lot of the silliness of the advertising industry when they're trying to find the right person to give the right message for, their pro for the product. And that's start the way it starts. And it's, it's sort of silly scene of all these about 20 or 30 young guys that are auditioning to be a male model. And then uh, the male protagonist of this movie, uh, he goes and he's got this girlfriend, this really pretty girlfriend. And uh, they're in a restaurant. I guess it looks like Manhattan to me, you know. And uh, just like in my marriage, back and forth, cat and mouse kind of game going on between the husband and the, I mean, the boyfriend and the girlfriend. And they're at a table in a restaurant. And... Um, she had told him the night before that she was going to pick up the bill, you know, Brave New World. Women are making more than men. Well, she's making more than him because she's an influencer and uh, also a model. But she's much she's already further down the line. She's making money and he's still struggling. So and then she doesn't pick up the check. You know, it's sitting there on the table. So she had told him she was going to, you know, she was going to pay the bill and she's not picking it up. So. He finally says to her, well, I thought you were going to pay, pick up the bill. And she says, well, I'd like to know that a man is, is going to take care of me, you know, if we ever get married or whatever. So that this, this is sort of a back and forth between them. And they have a big argument, which I'm familiar with, always the big arguments, right? And then she's in an elevator with him, and then she leaves the elevator, and he's screaming at her. So then after about an hour, an hour or two, she comes back to her. It seems that the hotel room they're in, uh, she had paid for it, but he still felt that she should have paid for the meal. So this is this result of part of the thing. So then they're going back and forth. That's this, that's pretty much scene one, showing all the back and forth and the arguments between them and petty stuff, you know. So silly. So what, what was the symbolism there? What what was the lesson? You know, the lesson in the male model. Uh, uh, you know, recruitment process, uh, their their trials, so to speak, yeah. trial showings was, uh, I guess the, the part that struck me was um, the definition of triangle of sadness, where the guy who was recruiting them said, uh, you have to, con you have to concentrate on your triangle of sadness. And what is that? Well, the triangle of sadness is, is a very expressive part of the face. And it's uh, it's the triangle between your eyebrows and your nose, and including that that part of your face which is between your eyes. And uh, he said, you know, if you're going to be a male model, you have to be conscious of that because you can express yourself. And I said, what is this? Is it ridiculous for the name of a movie, the triangle of sadness? And you and you and you try to make sense of it, George. As a lot of other things in this movie, you try to make sense. You you try to get through it. You try to find the meaning, you know, and there isn't a whole lot of meaning there. Okay, and and that that scene with the um, you know the the spat they had in a restaurant, where apparently she, he had bought dinner the night before, and she said the night before, 
that she would buy dinner, but the check sat on the table, you know. I mean, what he should have done was uh, turn to her, and I've seen this happen in, in my own dinner escapades. He turned and turned to her in front of the waiter and say, thank you very much for dinner. That was wonderful, and I really appreciate you picking up the tab. He didn't say that. He just <laughs> he stared at the at the bill. She stared at the bill. This has happened to all of us, hasn't it? <clears throat> and she just didn't pick it up. She was busy on her cell phone looking at social media. Exactly. But what what struck me about it was that he was the the, the male model. I forget his name right now. Um, the male model was trying so hard to make a big deal out of this. He was trying to paste her with it and blame her for it. More listeners, what, is, what kind of a ridiculous argument is this? So what? Um, you know, you had to buy her dinner. So what? The pretty girl, nice restaurant. What? What are you? What are you fetching about? And so again, you say to yourself, what? What is the scene all about? Is this trying to tell us some profound point of truth? I don't think so. I well, it didn't. You know, and tell me anything profound, except I suppose, and I saw this in one review, that you know this was an examination of the disparity of wealth. She had more money than he did, um, and um, you know this was like focusing on that. But I I didn't find it moving, and I didn't find it educational. That's just me. Uh, so th and that scene like drifted away into nowhere. The same thing in the hotel room. I didn't get anything out of it. Sorry. I got a lot of out of it because I don't know. I, I don't know your personal thing of how long you've been married, but I got divorced. And then I was dating different women much younger than me who had a very different perception of the world. You know, things change so quickly. So I totally understood, even though my ex-wife was also much younger than me, but from a different era. So in those few years, right? Um, in those few years, yeah, but you wouldn't make it simmer, out of who who bought the meal. You wouldn't, you know. He really, he really beat the horse on that. He yeah. kept on attacking her over it, and she said, "No big deal. What are you so excited? Okay, I'll buy dinner. All right, I'll put my credit card." Oh, and then there was a scene. Oh, yeah, don't forget, there was a scene where she gave her credit card to the waiter, and he went and tried to run it. Came, <laughs> your credit card doesn't work. It doesn't work. She said, try to do it again. Right. He he said, I tried twice, madam. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. See, said, what is this about? She's supposed to be wealthy. She's supposed to be making big money as a fancy model. Models make a lot of money, you know. Exactly. Uh, and 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 yet she had she didn't have a credit card that worked. <laughs> you know, the whole thing was like, like like theater of the absurd. Yeah. I understood that those, those scenes completely. Even though you had maybe didn't, I talk, because what with feminism, you know, and I'm a feminist. I believe in women having equal rights, but there's still a, a sort of a residue of when men are supposed to be the protector, making more money, protecting the woman, and yet with women making more and becoming more successful, that whole dichotomy has changed. I can I understood his aggravation, but but, but remember. He had bought dinner the night before. Yeah. So this was really, for him, this was just a matter of equity. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, he kept on he kept on attacking her, and he kept raising the subject, and it went on and on and on to the extent that people around the restaurant were looking, what are, what are they arguing about? This was so, you know, it was, it was out of a Woody Allen movie. It was, it was absurd. Ruben Os Oslin, what was his name? The the director, he had a, he was making a lot of ish points in this movie, and we'll get into that. But the French, it wasn't called Triangle of Sadness. I got to just figure, I, I, I forgot. They had a different name for it, which is something like a farce, you know? So they didn't, they didn't use that Triangle of Sadness. So, and meantime, that guy, Harris Dickinson, was the actor, and his name in the movie was Carl. So, so, um, and, and the, uh, the the filmmaker is uh, is uh, Scandinavian, I think. Yes, he's Scandinavian. He's Swedish. They make a lot of good movies in Sweden. Yeah, he's the director and the and the main writer. Yeah, he makes it a very good movie. But we'll get into that. Can I get? Yeah, in? Let's go to the boat now. This yeah. is uh, the next okay. part of the movie is about this two hundred and fifty million dollar boat. 
And the two of them got invited on the boat to promote the boat because they're both fancy uh, models. Precisely, right. So they get on this boat, this beautiful boat, right? And uh, they start meeting the wealthy people who are on the boat, you know, taking the cruise, right? And they're from different, different backgrounds. This director is tr really trying to make a point here. There's this one English couple that are very, you know, refined English couple, and you find out that they made their money selling um, bombs, no, uh, hand grenades, right, to all these countries around the world, which are <laughs> making, torturing people, you know? So that's how they made their money. And, and then there's the Russian, Dmitry, who's the Russian, um, he says he sells shit, and he's a fertilizer. <laughs> he sells fertilizer, he got very rich, and he's got this wife, right? And he's got this mistress, and they're both there with him, both the, the, his wife and his young mistress are with him, right? And he's sort of a Russian character, you know, you know, character, this guy. And, and then there's this German lady with her husband who had a stroke, and she can't speak except for two or three words in German that up in the sky or something like that. And that gets really interesting later in the movie, and we'll get into that too. So there's, there's that, and then there's this other single guy He's trying to pick up some woman, you know. He's trying to find find some woman or something, and uh, let me see. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to find some. Well, and he's the computer man. Yes, he, yes, he's a billionaire. Exactly, he made his money in some computer product, right, but exactly. he's a, he's a complete geek, and he's like over the hill. Exactly, but he's, <laughs> he likes these young young chicks, you know, young women. So, and he thinks that his money, you know, which obviously some women go for money, you know, that he thinks that can, that can make a difference to them on these young women. But he didn't realize that one of them was, I think, uh, Dimitri's mistress, and the other one was Carl's girlfriend. So he's trying to pick them up at the bar. He, he asks them to take a picture of him. He's, he's by himself. So that this movie gets, it, it gets really, really silly. And I think Oslin is trying to, I think Oslin, he's trying to make a point here. And at the end, you start, it all comes together as you like. Initially, I thought there was, I, I didn't like this movie. I thought it was really silly. You know, even though some of the scenes were um, hit home for me. So as this movie progresses, you find this, this steward. She's a, the chief of all the staff, of the upper, upper uh, level staff. And she's telling them how you have to always agree with the, with the clients, you know, the people on the, if whatever they ask, just smile. And, you know, I worked at Sears. And the answer is always yes. Always that was really, yes. that was a very funny part of the movie. Yeah. Uh, so. I understand <laughs> this too, because I worked at Sears when I was getting my first, ma my second master's. And they told us the customers always right, always smile, retail work, you always have to smile. The customers always right. always say yes. Always <laughs> say yes. So, but she's really gung ho about this. And then, so they're, they're, and everything seems to be going initially okay, except the captain of the ship, played by Woody Harrelson, he plays his role beautifully, right? I think they had a hundred, they had so many people before they picked him. I mean, they, they, this director decided on him, just like the director decided on Harris Dickinson, I think 120 people um, auditioned. And that was like the first scene before they picked this guy. He had to be blondish, he had to be a hunk, and he was, you know, the, because he had a, you know, against the dark, dark-haired um, girlfriend. So, so basically, everything's going smoothly for up to a certain point, right? And this captain, Woody Harrelson, who's playing the captain, he's sleeping all the time. And then the head steward, he's drunk. He's, he's drunk. drinking. Drink he's the it. captain in his cabin. He's drinking. It doesn't, you know, he's un unclothed and <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he's a complete waste. Complete waste. <laughs> So the, the, you get a stormy sea, and he's drunk in the cabin. So if he was at the helm, he may have been able to do some, you know, changes to keep the ship from being too much back and forth. But because he's drunk, the ship starts, you know, rocking back and forth, and people start getting seasick. But in that dining room, you know, eventually, yeah, he gets to that uh, captain's dinner, right? And he's all dressed up in a nice, you know, uniform and everything. And the, the, one of the other chief stewards is there next to him. And, 
And but he's not really aware of what's going on on the boat because the boat is tipping back and forth. I, you know, you know, you've been there. You get seasick. So people are getting seasick, and the the the, 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 the staff in the restaurant playing as if nothing's happening. They're giving them all these wealthy people, all these California cuisine, tiny little things that you get in the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. You know, they, this little piece of, they charge you, know you know mean, uh... right? They're, they're charging you really, but this tiny piece. And so it's all these wealthy people. And some of these, there's one woman, she's really out of her mind. She starts talking about the sails on the ship are dirty. But there's no sh ship sails because it's motor power. And you got all, and then this the, Dimitri's wife decides. Wait, wait, wait. He says the sails are dirty. You've got to clean the sails. Exactly. And Woody, and Woody Harrelson says, uh, uh, it's motorized. There are no sails. No, she says, I saw the sails. They're all dirty. Okay. Harrelson says, okay. In the morning, we'll clean the sails. Right. Right. So crazy. <laughs> So and and stay, stay yes to everything. You know? Yes, yes. <laughs> and I've, I've been there, you know, with the customers all over the right. So, so, um, so then you get, the, yeah, Dimitri's wife, who's a little wacky, she gets into this uh, jacuzzi and there's this young uh, uh, employee there and she starts telling her, get into the jacuzzi. And the, the young woman says, I can't do that. I'm on, I'm on work. You know, I, I got to, there's certain protocols. I can't do that. And she insists upon this. And then they get this head steward, and he says, "Oh, okay, if the, because you know Dimitri's really loaded selling shit in fertilizer for the in the Soviet Union or whatever Russia." So oh, the woman says, "The woman, the wealthy woman, she says to the uh, the waitress, she says, uh, you're saying no, you're saying no to me. I asked you to get in the jacuzzi, and you're saying no.' Yes, exactly. <laughs> and the waitress is having a breakdown because." She's been instructed in so many words to say yes to everything. <laughs> and yet she's also been instructed that you don't do things like that, right? <laughs> Finally, the head steward says, okay, okay. And 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 all the staff, this, uh, Dimitri's wife wants all the staff to, to get, so they get all from the lower level, all the Filipinos and... and Indonesians and all the the, the cooking people. staff, the engine room staff. They're all dark skinned, you know. I and, mean and they're all gonna yeah. swim down a long slide into the ocean. Right. Which is just such a farce. This whole thing's a farce. So I start I really got sick of this movie at a certain point until the end, right? And 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 so they're, they're all doing this. But Austin's trying to say something about racial inequality, um, financial inequality. Who runs the show and how they have the right that might is right, wealth is right. So he's he's really making a lot of statements there. So then you Well, do you remember the conversation between the Russian and uh, Woody Harrelson about yeah, communism the, versus capitalism? Yeah. Now that I thought was the core yes. of what the filmmaker was trying to talk about. But that uh, comes, yeah, but that comes after all the throwing up and all the, the poop coming out of the toilets. Which is really, you know, this movie. It's you say, what the hell is this? What in our nation is this? And and it, we're not just talking about a, a little bit of throwing up, Jay. We're talking about a lot of throwing up. And we're not talking a little bit of poop, you know, coming out of the toilets. <laughs> we're talking about the whole floods of poop. And, and you know, the and the ridiculousness of it is that all these people are billionaires, exactly, <laughs> surrounded in poop. Yeah. He's he's making a statement here that you know. Okay, so this goes on, and they're all throwing up, and then at this dinner, there more and more people are throwing up, right? And then they've got Dimitri's wife; she's rolling in her in her cabin and throwing up, right? The ship is going back and forth, and in, while this is happening, is what you were just alluded to is that Dimitri, who's a, a capitalist, Russian capitalist, and Woody Harrison, the, the captain, are having a discussion about about. Uh, you know, politics. And Woody says, I'm a Marxist, you know, he, he says, it's a feminist or a Marxist. And then Dimitri starts talking about capitalism, right? So this goes on and on while, this, while they're showing all the poop and all the throwing up. So Oslo's making a point here, the yeah, emphatic point. And then it starts to hit me that what, this is such a farce, but he's trying to say something, right? 
more than, and even with the models, he was saying something, but it didn't, it didn't catch me until at this point, right? You got all this, and it starts to be disgusting. You know, how much throwing throw up? I mean, <laughs> all these special effects, you know, showing people one after another throwing up what they put in their mouth, <laughs> spit out. And then you get to the point, okay, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead. Then these pirates. Well, I thought, I thought with all of the um, failure of seamanship, okay, and the weather and, uh, you know, and Woody Harrelson being completely drunk all the time, uh, that the ship was going to, you know, have a, uh, some sort of a catastrophe. You um, that was going to turn over against the wave. It was going to sink. It was something. But no, that's not what happens at all. You get a whole new level of disparity. Now you get a bunch of pirates, Caribbean pirates, very poor, you know, in a rotten old boat, and they are coming at this $250 million yacht yeah. in the darkness, and they're going to take it over. And the first thing they do is they throw a grenade, the very same kind of grenade that that English couple <laughs> got rich on. And it drops next to the He's English like, couple. And the wife says, oh, isn't, isn't this one of yours, dear? <laughs> that scene was phenomenal. But then immediately after that, they pull away. They put back to the oh, little it blows ship, up. And it, uh, the back of the ship blows up. Because <laughs> she, she, while she's holding this thing, it, it explodes, right? Yeah. And then that, that's sort of the end of that scene, scene two. Well, uh, there's, there's no more ship. There's it's no gone, issue, right? and a good number of these billionaire passengers are gone. Are and gone. now you have a fraction of who who you met earlier in the movie, and they're on the beach. Exactly. And as I recall, Woody Harrelson is gone. It's gone too. It's the yeah. end of his appearance in the movie, and others too. So you have, you know, from maybe, I don't know, 40, 50 people in the dining room, now you have like half a dozen, yeah. a dozen maybe. Exactly. Uh, and they're on the beach in this Caribbean, remote, uh, deserted, apparently deserted <laughs> Caribbean island. Exactly. And that's where the movie really takes off. Exactly. That, that is where he's really making the point. But Woody Harrelson, he had another engagement. So they, I was reading that he had to be taken off the because the, the filming was stopped because of COVID. And then it was so they had 37 percent of the filming in 2019. And then they didn't start again until late 2021. So Woody by Harrelson probably had something else to do. But as you said, that is where everything comes together like you like. And then I started liking the movie because it. I started to understand. Now, what you have there, he's really mocking all, Oscar, he's mocking all these wealthy people. And when you get on that island, everything changes. Because the, the, the head cleaning lady for the toilets, right? Abigail, who's played by this phenomenon. She was the, the bathroom manager for the she yacht. Was, yes. She was the lowest one on the pole. Exactly. Um, she was, you know, like in, an invisible staff member having no consequence whatsoever on the yacht. Yeah. Uh, and here we are in Lord of the Flies, where Precisely. all these people are on a desert island and their, their true nature comes out, you know? And wow. some of them are really pretty ugly. Yes. And they're trying to play the same role, roles right. as the billionaire roles they played on the yacht and Be in safe. life. But right. they can't do it anymore because they can't find food. And she can find food. Be this safe. changes the, the whole social structure of that group. And she, can, she knows how to, as you said, has a fish, and she knows how to make a fire. But just as an aside, I worked at Piquet Lane Swim Club in, on the North Shore of Long Island. All these wealthy people. I was cleaning toilets at six, 16 years old. So I totally understand where she, this woman was because I was a toilet cleaner. You know, dad was sick, dying, and I had to do whatever I could do. So bottom line is getting back to this. So it ta the tables are turned, and she says that the cleaning, head cleaning lady, I am now the captain because I'm the one who knows how to make get food for us, right? <laughs> so then, so, but before that's that, the best scene in the movie, exactly. where she turns to them all. She says, uh, "I'm the captain, right? Uh, because if I'm not captain, if you don't want to admit that I'm the captain, then no food for you." Exactly. 
<laughs> because she came up, she had a, a, the, this little uh, lifeboat which was enclosed and had all the uh, provisions, you know, if you if an emergency provision, and she was floating around in that, right? So, so she comes there and she's got this little enclosed boat, right? And uh, now she's on top. Now she's the top, and 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 they're wave as as they're opening. They're, they're, uh, Dimitri waves his Rolex to her, and and someone else. Uh, who else? So they're 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 showing their wealth, right? But it doesn't mean anything anymore on this island because all that matters is getting food, and she's the one to get the food. Then she becomes the top of the heap, right? And all these millionaires become not, they're, they're nothing because it doesn't matter. You're on this deserted island. It's well, that's the, the right there is a part of the movie that really struck me. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it. I, you know, it, it was almost subtle. She said, um, uh, you know, I want the hunk. I want the hunk to come with me and live with me in the lifeboat. It was an enclosed lifeboat. Yeah. And uh, I want sex from the hunk. Uh, the, the hunk. Yeah, but she doesn't say that. But that's what she wants. That's right? what she wants. And you and right. It's subtle. You You don't realize at first what is going on here. And then you realize that, you know, she has never been married, never had a kid, has had no sex life at all in her whole life. And she's way older, you know, than the, the models are. Yeah. And she's not pretty at all. And <laughs> she has had a terrible life. But now she's just you, the hunk. You come with me. <laughs> I need you to service me. <laughs> just like these actors, the old actors, you know, some of them still got their looks some don't but they've got these young pretty uh, young women wives and girlfriends and you know it's all about money you know that at 75 i'm starting to realize that everything wraps around money nothing else you know to love or money it's all money which i you know it's why i'm becoming more leftist like like harrelson you know as i get older because it's so so bottom line is so so as you said she takes this young hunk having sex with him inside the and her girl his girlfriend sort of wonders what's going on but she she's really stuck because she's got to eat too and he gives her whatever um, Abigail gives him he gives it to to, to Yaya right? Yaya right that yeah. was her name Yaya his names yeah 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 we'll get into what happened to the actress too which is really really sad so yeah. bottom line is as things are going finally Yaya, Yaya gets tired of this and she decides she's going to go and look on the island to see oh no before that she, the, she the invites the filipino yes. to go on a hike right because she feels she ought to have a better relationship with her yes. because the, the filipino is stealing her boyfriend exactly <laughs> is sleeping with him every night exactly. and, and she just she's like disturbed about that so she yes. goes on a hike with him with her yes. and and that hike is Probably the now we're getting close to real profundity. Exactly. What At what happens? End. What happens? Okay, but then we'll have to get back to the to the woman that that, that didn't uh, that couldn't speak. So bottom line, they're oh yeah right yeah I'll, I'll allude to that later. And and um, they're hiking and hiking and hiking and Yaya is young so she can climb, but the, uh, Abigail is uh, you know um, older so she has trouble climbing some of these mountains and stuff. So finally, Yaya's walking ahead. And Yaya comes upon the beach for a luxury resort. And there's an elevator that goes up to the hotel from the beach. And she says, my God, civilization, right? So she's calling to, to, to Abigail, who's still further back. And Abigail comes. And then the revelation in Abigail's mind is, oh, my God, my world here will fall apart because the minute we get back to civilization, I'm a cleaning lady again, right? So meantime, right before that, Yaya and hugs uh, Abigail, you know, and said, because she's so happy that they found civilization, but she doesn't realize that Abigail really doesn't want to go back to civilization because now she's on She's the top of top dog, and she'll be the bottom dog again. So Yaya tells her, you know, you could. I, I'm going to make you my my assistant. You know, my administrative assistant. But even that is not good enough for for Abigail. No, it's she, an insult. Yeah, it's an insult. But Yaya doesn't realize it's an insult because I'm in that 
deserted island, half of the island, she's she's the chief. And now she will be back to as in a secondary role, right? So she starts thinking, and 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 this this is how the movie ends. It's very it's it, it, you never know where it's gonna where it's gonna go from there. But she starts. Yaya is looking at the water, and 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 um, uh, Abigail. She's, she's waiting for Abigail to come. But Abigail says, "I got to take a leak. Exactly. And I'll be right back." And oh, yeah. when she comes back, she sees uh, Yaya, you know, waiting for her, looking at the water, facing away from all the fancy, you know, chaise lounges and umbrellas and that elevator you talked about. Okay, so she grabs the rock. This is a big rock. This is a big rock. This is. You know, a twenty-pound rock, and um, and she's approaching uh, Yaya from behind, and she's got this crazy look in her eyes. This, you know, she her life is her life on the island is coming to an end. Her power in, in Lord of the Flies is coming to an end, and she she can't stand uh, losing that power um, and losing the man. You know, the hunk going to lose it all. But if she had a moment of greatness in her life, and now she is about to lose it all. So she's approaching Yaya from behind with the rock, with the crazy look in her eye, and she's about to bring the rock down on Yaya's head and br- smash her skull and kill her, yeah. just as the tourists are coming down in the elevator. Yeah. And that's when the movie ends. And it's- you never know for sure whether Abigail did it or didn't do it. Gotcha. So my question to you, I've been waiting a week to ask you this question. Yeah. <clears throat> did she do it? To me, there were two factors where she might have been stopped. Either her human nature, I mean, you know, it's difficult to kill somebody. I mean, that, that's anybody with any soul at all. That's a pretty, you know, and she, you, you could tell that Abigail was sort of, she wasn't really sure if she wanted to do this. But I didn't catch that the people were coming down in the elevator, right? So there was people coming on the beach at that point. Plus, Carl, what was his name, Harris, is running, desperately running through this. He must have sensed something when the two of them, and he, you know, he wasn't that stupid. He figured if, you know, they... (laughs) No, to that, most to of the characters in this movie are stupid. Yeah. There's, no, there's nobody smart here. There are no heroes, including Woody Harrelson. Yeah. They're all working on automatic. Automatic. <laughs> nobody is thoughtful. Nobody is smart. But he must have had some sense that something might happen. They show him running to the beach. So m- my scenario is either those tourists came down and she decided not to do it because then she was going to be shown to be a, a murderer, or that Carl finally reached them and stopped her, or that her conscience took over and she said, I can't, I mean, as much as I'm going to lose everything, I can't do this, you know, because there was sort of a bond between her and Yaya as well, you know, there was sort of a, I mean, they liked each other, you know, even though she was stooping the, <laughs> with the boyfriend, you know. You know, I don't think she could have done that. I, I, I really don't think, because as much as she was the boss with the food and stuff, she was giving them pretzels and stuff, even though um, Carl and the other guy, one of the, the, the mechanic, were, were stealing some of, the, some of the food that she had left on, on the beach, right, back at the, where they first came in. So, and then one of the things, you know, that, and I, you know, it, this is the profoundity. Dimitri, his wife, washes up dead on the beach, and he's crying. But the first things he starts to do, he takes off the diamond uh, necklace and the diamond <laughs> watch. all the jewelry, and he puts it in his shoe. <laughs> in other words, she's gone, but I'm not going to let go I'm of I'm not the- leaving his jewelry on the beach. So, so, so well, what is really important to, in life? What is important in life? You know, I mean, Oslin is obviously a, a Marxist or a socialist, right? And he's really disgusted with all these wealthy people that push their weight around. And, you, you know, even in our the Democratic Party, Republic, there it's only wealthy people who are running the show on both sides, you know, 
So Bernie Sanders, there's, there's you know, very few of him. Uh, so, so, I mean, bottom line is Oslin is making a point here. He's making these people look silly, right? He's, he's sh- stripping away every sense of, of their honor, right? And, 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 and the throwing up and the, and the poop coming well, out. He, of the he's point. degrading them. Exactly. You know, he's, he's telling you they're billionaires right. and, and, and they're, you know, absurd billionaires. Exactly. And they did, you know, awful things to get to be billionaires. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, um, and, and now he, he makes fun of them. Exactly. Uh, and he, he, he degrades their lives. He degrades he, in every which way. What he's trying to tell you is that, you know, the disparity is really bad news. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, Abigail uh, has, has the leverage, you know, when you get down to the beach on the deserted, apparently deserted island. By the way, my analysis on what, what happens at the end after the movie is over is that it, it was going to be too obvious that she killed uh, Yaya. She's, she was portrayed as uh, pretty pretty sharp. You know, more Akamai than you would ever think looking at her. She didn't look like she was Akamai, but the things she did were Akamai and, you know, the statements she made were articulate. And so I I thought, hmm, she's not going to do it because she's going to know that she'll be caught in a minute. And so it it isn't good. And even though she was insulted by the suggestion that she become Yaya's, um, you know, assistant. Um, she'd take that rather than, uh, you know, be guilty of a crime and be caught immediately. Because I didn't catch that those tourists were coming down the elevator, and and you caught that, you know, being blind one. So you caught that. So I think to me, he didn't do it, even though maybe she really wanted to do it, and she her whole life. But you see, it's also life and death. I mean, no matter. When I was volunteering for Gregory Peck's son, Harry Peck, in his campaign in 1970, they sat me, I, I worked so hard for the campaign, they sat me next to Angie Dickinson and all these big shots, right? And you realize that most of those people are now dead. So no matter high, how high you rise in life, we all end up pretty much in the same place, maybe in a more fancy cemetery or in a crematorium. But I mean, Oslin is also making the point here to me, that it's not only that you lose your status in life, but when all those millionaires were on the boat that didn't make it, there's a lot of things he's trying to say here that are very profound. So at the end, I really like this movie, Jay. Even though it started, I didn't like it. I thought it was silly. I thought it was ridiculous. It was absurd. In the end, it makes some very, very, very critical points. And and what what were those points? That if you're well, you're that in this life you rise, but the the and the people who, I mean, it's whoever's in ch- is in charge makes the money. They call the shots. They get who they want sexually. They get what they want. On yachts, you know, they can they they get the beautiful five or six beautiful homes, right? But when the tables turn, it was the it was the cleaning lady who became the chief, right? Because she was the one who could provide the food through the cooking and the catching fish. She had the skills that they didn't have. That in, in their in their wealthy lives, they didn't have those skills, you know. They had, if, even if they had them at a younger age, they lost them. So this, and, 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 and the other thing was, when Abigail was thinking of killing, it's because she was going to lose everything. What are, what are we dealing with in the world with Putin, Erdogan, uh, Saddam Hussein, all these bad guys, right? Uh, Gaddafi, right? Yeah. I mean, you've got all these des- despotic leaders, right? They're calling the shots, but if the tables turn, what happened to Saddam Hussein? He was murdered. Gaddafi was murdered, right? Uh, 
um, uh, the Shah of Iran, he he had to leave, right? And he came came down with cancer. So that Mus that's the point. Mussolini was hung by his heels. Exactly. Yeah. So when it, when it comes down to the end, when you're on the beach uh, in Lord of the Flies in, yeah. a, in a sort of reinvented society, a sim a simplified society, yeah. uh, you find out who's really who's really in charge. And um, yeah, the billionaires are not necessarily in charge, I guess. See, I have uh, a couple of things you wanted to mention. I'm going to remind you. Was yeah, I forgot woman about Woman with the stroke. Okay, yeah. she's in a boat, a lifeboat. Yeah. She's all by herself. Yeah. Um, and this this guy, uh, this, this Caribbean peddler, uh, comes up and tries. He's carrying all all this uh, swag, and he's trying to sell her everything in the world. And she can't speak. <laughs> now that has to be very symbolic. So all the trash swag, and she can't speak. And he is fed up with her because she's not buying it. She's exactly. not buying any of his wristwatches or or caps or whatever kind of junk he was selling. And and you realize at, at once that this is not a desert island. There are people walking around trying to sell you things. Exactly. So you but realize, she, but she can't communicate, you know, with him, and he he is disgusted, disappointed with her because she's not taking her wallet out. Exactly, because she he doesn't understand what she's saying, right? And he yeah. doesn't. He probably didn't have a wallet, right? See, because yeah. the reasons I looked at this movie too is because you know you know I'm blind in the left eye, and I I bump into people in the supermarket, and they give me stink eye. They're pissed at me because just like that merchant, the seller didn't understand that the woman can't speak. People don't understand. I don't see them on this side. I don't have I, little kids. Were you were little kids? I don't see three D. So. There's a lot of things in this movie that hit me very much to my own personal life. So I wow. really, really like this movie. And, and, and oh, I was saying, I don't remember Lord of the Flies exactly, even I've saw, seen it. So you understand Lord, the, the relationship to Lord. Well, it's a bunch of uh, teenagers who wind up on a desert island and they, <laughs> they do terrible things to each other. Uh, uh, William Golden, I think, was the guy who wrote the book, and the book got in, into a movie. and. And there are people who criticize the book and the movie as a, 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 an incorrect uh, statement of, um, you know, a social psychology. But be that as it may, it does remind you of the desert island and people, you know, um, reordering their, their power within a small group. It was really like that. But before we, before we leave on this, before I ask you your, your numerical you know, rating of the movie, uh, one thing you mentioned, and it's really sort of sad, yes. is that this very pretty model, yes, uh, exactly. who was uh, an up-and-coming actress, uh, played Yaya, a very, very pretty woman, nice face, nice, nice, nice. Um, <clears throat> she died shortly after the movie was completed, like last summer, you exactly. know, like within six months from exactly. now, from then. And, and, uh, and she died and, suddenly. I don't. I don't know if I know the story about I how. I know the but... story. See, the thing is, when in the movie, when you had Abigail ready to kill her, and then six months later she dies. She died because when she was a teenager, she was in an automobile accident with another young model, male model, and she had to have three ribs removed, had a collapsed lung, and broke her wrist, and they had to take out her spleen. And a spleen is one of the organs that really helps with infection. And somehow she picked up, you know, these New York restaurants, as fancy as they may be, in the back room, you don't know what goes on. You know, I worked in the cafeteria at Stony Brook, God, picking up the poop, the, the food off the floor. So bottom line is she comes down with this uh, bacteria that's in, in, the, in, the, in the digestive tract of animals, you know? So, so because the spleen was removed, she goes to the hospital. It's a very, she has a very mild case. She's not feeling well. And within hours, she dies. Now, what they did in the hospital, did they make mistakes? I'm very familiar with hospitals making mistakes. She died within hours because she came down with, sep she had sepsis because the spleen being removed, her, her liver her, yeah, the liver couldn't take the infection, and she died within hours. Okay, but, anyway, I, it's very tragic because she's very a tragic. very pretty woman, and she was a... Uh, she had a certain gravitas in this movie. She did. So, what, what did you give the movie as a rating? It, at the 
at the end a 10 a 10 plus because the the the, the message was so profound so many messages were profound this Austin is a genius and this movie won Palm d'Or it won the the best movie at the Cannes Film Festival and it's coming up for Golden Globe and and uh, you know uh, the other other awards so um, a lot of silliness Jay a lot of stupidity a lot of poop and a lot of throwing up but in the end he's really made a point he hit home so that's that's why I, I'll give it a lot of this movie I don't like I don't like all that sewage I don't like all that throwing up I think that was a little overdone well it was yeah I, I, there was a lot of absurdity in the movie and you know, I, I I did understand what you were talking about the the messages uh, that he was trying to give us sometimes they were more mm, clear you know more more obvious than other times um but I, I thought he could have done a much better job uh in 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 giving us a movie that would have helped us here on this review that would have helped us you know identify the, the lessons he was trying to portray i think uh, you know the lessons were valid when you shake it and bake it but um the so much absurdity around them i thought he could have done a better job and and you know, it's an example of all these awards and cans and the like. And sometimes I think those people are like the people in the movie. <laughs> they don't really know what's going on. They just they're on automatic, and uh, you know they're fancy movie stars or uh, people who you know hang around in cans and Nice and what have you. And um, I, I'm not sure I would have given an award in in cans and Nice. I would not have done that. So I don't give it a 10. Sorry. No. I, I, maybe it's because our life experiences, George, are different. Very and different. You, you experienced a lot of the absurdity that we described. But I, I wouldn't give it anything above a 7. Might, might be less than that. Uh, only because I, I didn't think that some of the, some of the uh, absurd humor was necessary to make the point. And, you know, if, if, if he had been a more refined movie maker. By the way, he's working on another one right now. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, then you know he might he might have done a better job. Maybe maybe uh, we we'll take a look at the next one and see if he does do a better job. Thank you, George, for a very interesting discussion. Thank we'll you, have Jim. another one and another movie two weeks from now. Um, it's always fun to review these movies with you. Movies we can learn from with George Casey. Thank you so much. Thank Double you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.